news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is a prayer. It is a prayer. It is known as the high priestly prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ. We begin reading the thoughts of the Lord as He ended His mission on earth and with glory returned to the Father. The scene of the, last, of the gospel is the Last Supper. And since the 16th century, this beautiful prayer has been called the High Priestly Prayer. In it, the Lord Jesus he speaks directly to His Father. What are some of the things that we can learn from the Gospel for today? There are actually many, but we cannot take them all up in one short homily. I'd like to zero in on two or three little points that I think is going to be of interest to many of us. I'd like that we reflect this morning about the second important thought in the Gospel because it contains the New Testament definition of eternal life. Eternal life. Everlasting life. What do we know about eternal life? How many years is eternal life? 100 years, 1,000 years, 5,000, 10,000, 1 million, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. How long is eternal life? How long is everlasting life? My dear friends, probably we should right away say that in the next life, there is no watch. In the next life, there is no calendar. The Bible also says, In God, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. So how long is eternal life? How long is everlasting life? My dear friends, it is eternal life to know God and to know Jesus whom He has sent. The word eternal, the word everlasting, has nothing to do with the duration of life. It has nothing to do with the number of years. It has nothing to do with the number of days. The main meaning is quality of life. It is not about the quantitative type of life, but the qualitative type of life. Eternal life is therefore nothing other than the life of God. Eternal life is the life of God. To possess eternal life is to experience even here and now on earth something of the splendor of God, something of the majesty of God, something of the joy something of the peace, something of the holiness, which are characteristics of the life of God. And to know God is to know what God is like and to be on the most intimate terms of friendship with God. And neither of these things is possible without Jesus. This is the meaning of eternal life. Eternal life is life with God and living the life of God. Another great interest of this passage is that the gospel tells us of the things for which the Lord prayed for the disciples. The first essential is to note that our Lord did not pray that his disciples should be taken out of this world. Jesus did not pray that the disciples might 
find escape from the problems, from the difficulties, from the trials and the challenges in the world. No, by no means. But the Lord prayed that the disciples might find big victory. He insisted that it be in the rough and tumble of life that a person must live out his Christianity. In other words, Christianity does not offer us release from problems, but it shows us a way to solve problems. Christianity does not offer us an easy peace, but a triumphant warfare. Christianity does not offer us a life in which troubles are escaped or evaded, but a life in which troubles are faced and conquered. The Christian is not of this world, but the Christian is in the world. The Christian never desires to abandon the world, but to win the world. And finally, the high priestly prayer of the Lord contains also the prayer of Jesus for the disciples. He prayed for the unity of the disciples. The Lord says, I pray that they may be one, just as you, Father, and I are one. My dear brothers and sisters, the cause of Christianity is harm. The prayer of Jesus is frustrated. Whenever there is division, whenever there is exclusiveness, whenever there is infighting or competition among brothers and among friends. These are some of the thoughts that the Lord wants us to reflect on in our gospel reading for today. Amen.